what I what I just left you with was the question of you know going back to this problem. So again, we are in the lecture we are on fluid statics right now, and just familiarizing ourselves with the units. Um, oops, let me get the screen back here. What some you know reasonable numbers are for uh, pressures that we experience here on Earth. We're still in fluid statics. The problem I asked you to tell me is how many um, how many kilograms of mass there are above a one meter square chunk of real estate on planet Earth. Um, we went back uh, just straight with our old 14.7 psi. That's atmospheric pressure. Why don't you see that on your tire gauges out here? So if you, you know you go out to one of these compressors. You don't see that? Why, why is that? What's that? Well, well it, now the units will be PSI, but the, 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 the reason you'll see it on your pressure gauges is because there's atmospheric pressure on both sides of the gauge. Unless there's a difference, you won't see it. It's not until you start pumping that compressor full, and that's why you'll hear uh, someone say, do you mean pressure, do you mean absolute pressure or gauge pressure? And almost anything you're ever going to see is gauge pressure, right? So you, you, you pump up your bicycle tires, your car tires, it's 35 PSI. Well, it's 35 PSI above the 14.7. If it was just at 14.7, your tires would be flat. Yeah. You know, they'd just be at equilibrium. So that's where the 14.7 comes from. And we agreed that there's, you know, 14.7 pounds of air above the a one you know, one inch square, wherever you happen to be on Earth. But now getting into the SI units, we introduced what a Pascal was. I said it's one, one Newton per square meter. Uh, I defined what a Newton was in terms of mass um, because, well, a lot of times we become confused what mass and force are because we use pounds for both our system rather than having two different names for mass and force. And so what I decided or we determined is that one Newton is the weight of about a tenth of a kilogram of mass or about 100 grams or about three ounces. So the question is, well, how many kilograms are in this one meter by one meter chunk of atmosphere that's 60 miles tall stretching all the way to space? Well. The key in the solution is just sitting right here. Um, one Newton has a mass of about a tenth of a kilogram. So um, 100,000 Newtons, which is what 100,000 Pascals are per square meter, you just knock a zero off. Your 100,000 Newtons just turns into 10,000 kilograms. Because we're just, we, don't have, we don't have to take the area into effect. We're just talking about one, one, square, one square meter, or one meter squared. So from there, 1,000 kilograms, well, that's you know 10 metric tons. And again, we're just kind of doing order of magnitude here. So 10 metric tons, uh, that's about the same as 20,000 pounds, you know, short tons. And you're like, gosh, that sounds like a lot more. You know, tw uh, 20,000 pounds sounds like a heck of a lot more than 15 pounds. How did it get so big all of a sudden? Well, um, one square meter is 39 inches by 39 inches. Square that. One square meter is 1,521 inches squared. You multiply your 1,521 by your 14. 14.7, because there are, in every one of those little square inches, that's how many pounds of air there are, and you end up with about that many um, pounds. So it works out. Okay. So again, back here, there are 10 tons of air in that little chunk. Now, you could do the same thing, and, and really all you'd have to do um, if you were underwater, and I'll just give you the, um, I'll give you the um, formula for that. 
So let's just say, you know, pressure H2O. Anybody been uh, scuba diving, snorkeling, anything like that? So, I, you know, I've, I've, I've done a little, little bit of snorkeling, but I remember one time, I, don't, I think I must have been just, just out of high school, just in college, I thought I was going to um, do the trick where you lay on the bottom of the lake and you breathe and you um, hang out and try to um, stay underwater for a long time. Once you're down maybe three or four feet, your lungs cannot push back on all the water pressure. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, so that's why your, you know, your snorkel is only about a, you know, a, a foot long maybe, but the, the pressure in, um, in water, so let's just, let's just do a little water pressure example. How many times more dense is water than air? Approximately, I think we might have even done this last time. I did a little bit of this. Yeah, it's about a thousand times. It's about a thousand times more um, more dense. So, one you know one cubic meter. Let's do it this way. Um, you know, when I say one cubic meter, and you're not used to working in meters, just think one cub cubic yard. They're nearly the same. So, you know, one meter cubed. Um, that weighs one thousand. Uh, kilograms. If this were air, it would weigh about one kilogram. So water is a thousand times more dense than air. And that's why we can breathe in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is not crushing the air out of our lungs, but you can't breathe, uh, can't breathe underwater so well. So let's just calculate the pressure at, uh, at one meter of depth. So here we are. Here's my uh, foolish self uh, sitting down here with my tube going up to the surface. Um, so what is the uh, change in pressure? Well, um, we, know, we know that uh, force, this is just back to Newton, we know that force equals uh, mass <coughs> times acceleration. And let's... Um, Let's just first do it in SI units. So I'll just first calculate it in Pascals since we just got done doing that. And then we'll go back and convert it to PSI because it's kind of <coughs> easy, easier to think about. Like you, when you think about PSI, you're like, okay, I know what 35 is, I know what 100 is. Big pardon? 35 PSI meter. 35, again, what? Global surface. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just going to figure it out what it is at one meter, how, how many, uh, how many PSI. But I'm, I'm going to first do it in um, Pascals. We'll do it in Pascals. Okay. <laughs> so um, to, to do this, what we need, again, and this, it's, the same, it's the same problem we just did in air, but now we're going to do it in water. So what is the mass? And we'll just, we'll just assume, we're, again, we're just looking at uh, one um, you know, one meter squared of area. What's the mass of this square meter of water? Well, I just told you, it's a thousand. Uh, it's a thousand kilograms. So the the force equals. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so we need the. Uh, the acceleration. Right, so the, the force, we'll do the force over the entire surface there. So 1,000 um, kilograms. And then acceleration, it's, it's um, still at 10 uh, meters per second squared. That's going to give us, um, well, 10,000 uh, newtons. And then if we divide that by the entire area, then we'll, then we'll just divide it by that full uh, one meter. The pressure just equals um, 10,000 newtons divided by one meter squared equals um, 10,000 pascals of pressure at a depth of one meter. Now, 
Again, I told you Pascal is pretty small, but 10,000 is kind of large. Let's just convert Pascals to PSI and see if that seems, uh, seems like a lot or a little. And I'm just, I'm just going to pop out to a little uh, pressure converter. Okay. So what did I say? I'm at, I'm at 10,000 pascals. Okay, 1.4 psi. Well, that doesn't sound like much, right? Well, how much how much area is that acting over? Well, it's acting over your whole chest. So the question is, how you know how much force is acting on your chest? Let's just do a little back of the envelope. So what's the um, what's that? Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's 1.4 PSI. So I told you, you know, Pascals are pretty small. 10,000 of them is only 1.4 PSI. But let's just say, um, you know, here's your, here's your chest right here, area. So the, the pressure again of the H2O equals 1.45 uh, PSI. But now the force equals, and again, we're still doing fluid statics. Nothing, nothing's moving anywhere. So the force equals the pressure times the area. Um, what's, what's a reasonable chest area? Maybe a foot by a foot, something like 14 that? By 14. 14 by 14. We'll go with that. So 1.45. PSI, um, so that's square inches, so we'll do 14 inches uh, times 14 inches, that'll work. Bring up the calculator, so 1.45 times 14 times 14 equals 284, so that's like having a football linebacker sitting on your chest while you're trying to breathe. That's why you can't breathe when you're three feet in water. Yeah. <laughs> because, and, and why is that? Well, the, um, you know, back to this figure, there's, there are, um, you know, 300 pounds right here acting down on your chest, but up here, you're just, you're just back at that 14. So that's, that's the pressure difference that's forcing the air out of your lungs. And you're like, well, how? Yeah. Yeah, because what's happening in the scuba gear, that, that tank is already pressurized. You've got a regulator that basically shoves that air into your lungs so it can okay. compete with the uh, pressure under the water. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you just. Well, laying on the bottom versus not does not matter because if you're if, if you're scuba diving, and you know you're like vertically, you basically still have those two 300 pound linebackers smashing into your front and back. It's the same uh, same difference in terms of That's pressure. That's where the advances are. Jacques Cousteau uh, made with the aqua lung. Uh huh. That's, that's how they were figuring all that because of all his experiments. Okay. On that, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. If you hold your breath and then descend down. Yeah. Feet. It just squishes it down, doesn't it? it? You have no expansion and no crushing because yeah. it compensates for the pressure yeah. in the depth. Yeah. But if you breathe, that totally messes up the equation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so hopefully, so really, that's about all I wanted to cover on uh, fluid statics. So we covered, we covered pressure, we looked at um, conventional units, we looked at SI units. We looked at, uh, you know, really the definition of atmospheric pressure, both in conventional and SI units. Um, took a look at the relationship between uh, newtons per square meter and pascals. We weighed the atmosphere and did a little bit of units conversion. We did it for air, and then we did it for water. So let's take a break there, and then we'll get back and do some fluid dynamics. Mm -hmm.